All right, so this talk is about uh, delivering complex software with open component model in flux um, in the context of high security and with the potential of zero connectivity. Uh, so starting with a little intro here, who am I? I'm uh, Dan Small, I'm an expert software engineer at SAP. I've uh, been with them for about three years. I've been in the industry for about 27 years, uh, mostly at big companies, Symantec, IBM, and now SAP. Uh, worked in the dev tool space, the GRC space, and worked on a lot of um, internal CI, CD type projects. I've got a little mini agenda here. We're gonna uh, talk about some challenges with delivering complex uh, software products across security boundaries and uh, clouds uh, while maintaining compliance. compliance. Uh, a little bit of theory, so we'll have an intro to the uh, open component model and uh, the OCM tool set, the uh, integration with Flux, and uh, this term we're uh, throwing out called uh, GitOps localization. And then we'll have a little demo where we uh, transport a simple software component um, or describe, uh, transfer, and deploy a simple software component using uh, OCM, well, using the elements that we just saw up above. All right, so challenge. How do you deliver cloud-native apps everywhere without jeopardizing security and while dealing potentially with zero connectivity? So, true nat cloud-native apps are cloud-native everywhere. Software providers like SAP need to describe, transport, and deploy complex apps to public cloud, private cloud, sovereign cloud, and uh, government clouds. Now, these last three are really kind of like the key reason for us having this talk because with those, usually you have policies in place that prevent you from just pulling whatever you want from wherever you want. So for example, Nginx, maybe you can't get that from Docker Hub, but instead you have to get it from some internal private registry. So to you know, kind of summarize the need or the challenge here, you need the ability to uh, describe a software component in a way that lets you gather up all of the deployable bits, then transport them into another environment, and then once they're there, you know, any of your deployment descriptors, anything that refers to those deployment bits, you know, they need to be fixed up. And this process of fixing it up, we're referring to that as GitOps localization. And once that's done, then you, of course you want to use normal GitOps methodologies for getting your software deployed. And of course this all can apply to on-prem and you know, hybrid uh, cloud as well. But it's not just about deploying the bits. You also want to bring out where all your tools, processes, um, and standards you know, into the new environment. For example, you know, any orchestrated deployment processes, you need to, to keep working. Um, in addition, you want to be able to secure your supply chain uh, while doing this, just as if you were in your previous environment. So kind of summarize what's needed here. Um, you know, after transport, you need to be able to check the integrity of what was transported and you also want to be able to you know, verify the provenance of it. Like, is it what I, in fact, expected it to be? Um, and also, uh, once it's been transported, you may need to perform you know, uh, some sort of locale-specific uh, compliance checks, you know, maybe a particular type of antivirus scan or something in that new environment. All right, so the solution we're presenting is bringing this all together with uh, the open component model. So bringing together the component description, um, the deployment resources themselves, and any signatures that uh, were acquired along the way, bringing that all into one thing, the open component model. And this comes about because uh, folks at WeaverWorks, uh, WeaveWorks and SAP kind of uh, you know, realized that you know, what they really were needing was a um, consistent way to refer to, uh, to describe a software component. Um, a way that was machine readable. And then with this, you know, it would be um, easy to implement tooling that would let you transport the bits, the deployable bits from one environment to another. And for anything that's um, going to need to look at those bits, again, any sort of uh, vulnerability scanners or what have you, um, they'd have what they need in order to do their job. So we'll look here at the open component model, um, an example of it. So this is just, you know, it's a YAML-like syntax, or YAML-based syntax. So every uh, component has a unique name and a version. And then a set of resources. Now, the thing to note with the items in the resource list, or the one item that you see here, is that how you identify the resource and how you locate the resource, they've been made separate. So instead of just having like a URI to uh, some sort of OCI image, 
and then you're done. No, we're keeping it separate. That's going to facilitate this GitOps localization because you can just adjust, once you move your model from one environment to the next, you just adjust the location and everything else can you know, key off of that new location. Um, now, this whole thing is you know, focused on uh, delivery artifacts. So we're throwing out also this term, uh, you know, software bill of de delivery as a way of you know, describing what this you know, provides. Oh, one other thing before I move away from this. Uh, it's also uh, supporting uh, nesting. So one component can actually be comprised not just of resources like a, a Docker image and a Helm chart or what have you, but it also can be uh, comprised of other components. So you can have a you know, dependency chain represented by this. All right, so use cases. So your, your normal build process, you know, if it were just to do what it does today, but then um, produce a, one of these um, OCM uh, component descriptors, uh, with that, then you'd have one way to refer to your artifacts. You could say, rather than say, oh, well, I've got my Helm chart over there and I've got my um, Docker image over there, you would say, okay, well, I've got my component and then that can say, well, in it, in a standard way, there's this resources, that resource, like bringing it all together in a standard way. Um, and of course, you could have one artifact or one component referring to another component. You could group them into an even bigger set. And with this OCM usage, now all your tooling can have one way to refer, one common name to refer to any single component rather than it's, well, it's a big bag of, you know, there's that, there's that, there's that. You can just say, hey, refer to the one software component and the inside there in a standard way, you've got your um, enumeration of all your resources. Um, any process that needs the bits, if you're using open component model, well, any process that needs a bit can go find the bits because the, the component descriptor says where the bits are. And of course, the dependency relationships are uh, now visible to any tooling that cares. So for example, if your compliance uh, you know, group is saying, well, we want to know everyone that is using um, log4j because that has some vulnerability. Well, if that's been modeled as a component, they can see in the chain, you know, you can your tooling can say, well, hey, here's all the things that are using that. Um, and of course, uh, with all the signatures gathered in one place, you don't have to, you know, if you're saying like, say, uh, your vulnerability scanner or your AV scanner, whatever, you know, those tools are putting signatures on the component to denote this has been passed this process. Now you've got all the signatures gathered in one spot. And with all that, okay, you can also then have your transport work, right? Because as we said, you've got a component that says, here's where all the bits are. And you can have tooling then say, all right, well, now we're going to move all those bits over to here and update the uh, descriptors to say, well, in this new environment, this is where the bits are. And of course, in the new environment, you can kind of, you know, you have all the same benefits. So any additional verification or anything that has to happen in the new environment, you know, if you're using this model, it's easy to um, implement. All right, so uh, how do we automate this? Um, now this is a you know, Kubernetes, GitOps, you know, Flux integration kind of talk. So we're going to just focus with a uh, focus on the Flux OCM integration. So uh, there's basically four parts to this integration with Flux. Um, there's the OCM CLI, and that is you know taking a component descriptor and then putting into a uh, OCI repository that you have uh, picked, putting all those resources and the descriptor in there. Uh, we've referred to that as an OCM repository, but it's really just an uh, OCI, OCI repository with specific stuff in it. So that's one piece. Um, there's a custom resource type, or a set of custom resource types that live in Kubernetes that kind of realize these um, components in Kubernetes. And then there's an OCM controller, which is responsible for taking what it sees in Kubernetes, the um, custom resource instances that are, that are in there, and taking the information that's in the uh, OCM repository and putting that into an OCI repository that it creates and that it makes Flux aware of. So that Flux can then, you can just use your normal rec rec uh, reconciliation 
from that OCI repository that's been populated by the OCM controller. And we'll get a sense of this when we get into the, um, the demo. Um, oh, right, uh, one other bit of automation, localization. So there's this OCI registry that the controller is populating and you're making visible to Flux. The resources that are put in there are localized with whatever localization rules you've provided. And again, we'll see that in the demo. Okay, so uh, the demo. Um, so in this demo, uh, we're going to uh, describe or look at the activities of describing a simple software component, transporting it across a boundary, and then on the other side of that boundary, we'll have it deployed using the GitOps localization. Um, we'll do this twice so we can see the process is repeatable. V1, V2, we'll get them rolled out. Um, now we're creating our boundary by using two orgs in uh, a Git T repository or a Git T server. Uh, this isn't really air gapped, but that doesn't matter. OCM is capable of storing any number of component versions into a tar file, which you could then put into a USB pod, transport into a secure location, and then upload from that tar file into an OCM repository that's waiting in the secure location. So you could just take that and insert it in the middle of what I'm showing here, and you'd be covering the air gap scenario. Um, now, for this demo, I've pre-created a few uh, resources um, just to, for expediency's sake. In the public org, we've already got our Docker images. We've got one of our two component versions and then a you know, myriad bit of source code. And in our private org, we have um, uh, all the boilerplate customized files uh, that are required to actually make the deploy happen. Um, now before I move away from this uh, slide and actually get into the demo, uh, I want to call out that not visible on here is the CLI, but there is an OCI, uh, OCM CLI. And um, we can see here in these images that we have uh, represented the, um, the component, the product, um, and it has references to the Docker image. And so when we do the transfer, we want to transfer our component from the one org to the next. Um, and in the new location, it's going to be referring to Docker images you know, that are local in that um, new location. All right. So let's go here. And hopefully, yes, this is. There we go. Okay, so. Right. Um, before I do that, we're going to go here. Here. All right, so first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at those resources, starting with uh, this deployment descriptor. So the thing of note here is the image field is actually uh, just, having, just having some placeholder value in it. And that's because the GitOps localization will actually fill that in after the transfer is complete. And then, now here we have um, a component descriptor. and uh, you'll recognize a couple of the elements from you know, one of the previous slides. So uh, we've got our unique name and our version, and we've got a resource list. Now, unlike before, we don't have any um, uh, composition aggregation happening here. So this is just a really simple resource list. Um, what we do have is a nearby directory that has manifests in it. Uh, the deployment YAML was you know, one of those. Uh, we have uh, a config. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, and I guess it'd be worthwhile to make note of the name of that config and then also the uh, next resource, which is our actual OCI image, you know, the, the Docker image that has our uh, code in it. Um, make note of the name of that image there because we're going to see that as well. But anyway, this is just a simple you know, descriptor. We've got a resource list in here. And you can see, again, the, you know, the identification of each resource is you know, separate from the, uh, you know, where it is. 
All right, so now, moving on to this config YAML. So I uh, mentioned before about localization rules. So here we have our, um, an example of localization rules. So you can see uh, we're saying what's gonna be um, localized, uh, the deployment YAML file that we looked at before, uh, so there's something that's in the component, and then you know, how it's gonna be localized. Well, it's got a reference to the field in the YAML file that it needs to be adjusted. That's the image spec. And then, okay, the value that is gonna be stored in that field is the location of the image resource. So here, we're, you know, that name there, uh, image, is referring to the name of the resource in the, comp um, the component descriptor before. And before we leave the browser, we'll just look into um, the private org um, OCI uh, repositories. Right now, there aren't any. Let me just uh, do a refresh here. And you know, that's gonna get filled in when we do our transfer. Okay, so now we're going to, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna take that component descriptor YAML that we had and we're gonna make a component archive. So the component descriptor is really just for machines and for you know, people to work with to describe a component, but it's not the actual component. Uh, component archive content, or what you would have in an OCM repository, that would be the actual component. So we're gonna produce a component archive, and um, then we'll also just kind of show us what's in there. So you see here we ran a couple commands. Um, the first was this uh, add component version, so that's actually making our archive, and you can see something about what went into the archive. And then next thing we did was we um, just enumerated the resources in the archive, just to see, okay, yes, you know, what we wanted in there is in there. All right, then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sign this, and then we'll run the verification on that. So you can see here the signature um, uh, command was run, or the sign command was made, run, and then it printed out a bunch of digests for the various things that are in there in, uh, in the component archive, and it gave a thumbs up. And then we did a verify, which the output looks very similar. It uh, spit out some digests of what was in the archive, and it, it gave a thumbs up. And now, uh, the next thing we'll be doing is we're going to transfer this component archive into the public um, OCI repository. So we're gonna put that V2 into our public repo. And um, we're also, after we're done with that, so this actually ran two commands. One was the transfer, so we took what was you know, the component, um, component archive that was local, transferred that into the uh, OCI repository of the public org, and then we actually did a verify, and you can see the tail end of the um, command there, where we're, um, you know, we're saying, you know, hey, we're targeting, you know, this repo, we're not just doing something local. And next. All right, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, transfer version one of our component from uh, the public org to the private org, and then we'll verify that. We'll, we'll, we'll verify that the bits landed appropriately. So here this is running. Now this takes a little bit more long, uh, more time, and we can see here, uh, we can see here, The transfer command here, you know, it took longer, and the reason why is we use this um, copy resources switch. We didn't use that before. So because we use the copy resources switch, the component version that was stored in the private org actually has in it the Docker image that's part of our component. So before, we didn't actually transfer the component. Basically, the components versions that we put into our public org, all they have is basically pointers to wherever the, the Docker image is. Um, they didn't actually bundle the Docker image in the component uh, version itself. But this time with copy resources, that's happening. So that's where we get our, um, our transfer happening. 
And then at the end there, or the second command, we did a verify. Um, this time though, we're looking at the private org where we transferred our component to, and it's you know, verifying that, hey, the signature is still valid for you know, the bits wherever they landed. And now, if we go here, I believe, and we refresh this, oops, refresh this, we see, okay, in our private org, you know, now we've got um, that first OCI repository, which is, it's an OCM repository, which means it has you know, particular content in it, the component version descriptors, et cetera, in there, and then we also have our uh, Docker image, which has been transferred over. And while we're here, uh, we'll go to here. Okay, so of the resources that we have in our uh, private Git repo, which is you know, hooked up with Flux, um, we've got uh, some files relevant to this whole process. So. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the um, component version YAML. Okay, so this, this custom resource here is, you know, making our component visible within Kubernetes so that the OCM controller can do its magic. And um, in here, at the bottom, we can see that um, we're telling it, hey, you're supposed to be verifying things, making sure it's signed by Alice. So that verification that we did before you know, from the command line while we're transporting bits, okay, that's all good. At least in this case, it's a bit redundant because the OCM controller has been told, you know, hey, anything that you're dealing with, it has to be signed. And it's just sort of like an automated uh, securing of our supply chain here. Um, and then uh, we will look at this localization. So this is, um, this custom resource is telling the OCM controller, you know, hey, you've got localization rules to apply. So that config YAML that we mentioned before, um, you know, that's going to be uh, named in here. Yeah, the rather unimaginative name at the bottom config, but anyway, this is telling uh, the OCM controller, hey, you know, you've got to localize um, things using the localization rules we mentioned or we showed before. And, you know, it's going to put it, like I said, into an OCI repository that Flux will be looking at. So that repository is named uh, there. And uh, lastly, And so this is just a plain Jane uh, Flux customization file, really. The only thing that's um, significant uh, you know, about it is that it's, it's pointing to the OCI uh, repository that the OCM controller is producing and filling in with localized data. Okay, so I think that's all we want to look at there. And then if we go here. Okay, so we have now, we see there's a deployment that's running. It's been um, running for about four minutes for you know, about as long as I've been yakking about this thing. Um, and if we take a look at the deployment descriptor, um, we can see that uh, the image has been fixed up, that GitOps localization took place, right? It's pointing to our uh, private repo, and uh, it's, you know, version one. I guess specifically, it's the version we transferred over. And then, if we do this, so here we're, uh, now we're transferring over the, you know, V2 of our component, And we take a look again. Uh, 
and now we see a, we have version two. So we can see how you know uh, with OCM and uh, you know the uh, tooling around it and the GitOps, or sorry, the Flex uh, integration, we can automate this whole process of you know transferring and localizing our deployments. All right, so if I get back to you here. Okay, come on, PowerPoint. Don't fail me now. There we go. All right, so the takeaways. Um, you know, OCM as a uniform component model um, enables you know, automated standard uh, and secure supply chain processes. Uh, OCM is really a software bill of delivery, and uh, the Flux OCM-based GitOps localization provides uh, GitOps automation for uh, complex uh, software uh, product deliveries and deployments. And um, in case I didn't mention already, uh, we have a website, OCM Software, where there's uh, getting started guides, uh, links to the spec, documentation, and uh, you know, contact info if you want to uh, learn more about uh, OCM and or potentially uh, contribute to it. Um, and I guess on the contribute part, I forgot to mention, um, OCM isn't just about deploying Docker images. Um, it's been designed with the intent that it would work with other things as well. So uh, RPMs or whatever kind of packaging you, you need to deal with. Um, we're just showcasing the Docker container support because that's what this uh, show is really about. So I think that's it. Um, if anyone has any questions or uh, anything, I'm here and I'll be around for a couple hours uh, after as well. Thank you.